Uh, Loki is with us. Uh, Renard is the editor and environmental reporter with independent, the Independent Media Institute, which also syndicates my work uh, when you read the articles that I've written on Salon or Alternet or Common Dreams or whatever. Uh, typically, you'll see at the very end a tag to the Independent Media Institute. Uh, Renard is also a writer for them. And he's got a new piece out. It's, uh, uh, the, the one I printed out is from Salon.com. It's titled, How Indigenous Peoples Won a Landmark Victory Protecting the Amazon from Oil Drilling. But it goes a lot deeper than that. Renard, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Tom. Appreciate Th it. Thanks for joining us. So tell us, tell us the story. First of all, you know, uh, frame it. What's what is the situation uh, as you know before we get into how how they tried to solve this problem? Okay. Well, Ecuador, as you may know, sits on a lot of oil. It's their main export. It's basically an oil economy. In 2012, the Ecuadorian government met with indi with indigenous community members in the Amazon forest uh, about developing that land for oil and fossil fuel. Um, then in 2018, uh, the government divided uh, the rainforest into 16 different oil blocks and then listed it for sale in an international oil auction. That's when the Warani people, one of seven different indigenous uh, groups living there, sued the government for um, making faulty a faulty consultations back in 2012. Those consultations mm. fall under uh, what is known as free prior informed consent, FPIC. And it's, it's guaranteed under international and national law in Ecuador. The, the judges decided last month that those consultations in 2012 were faulty. They were held in bad faith. The government basically tried to trick the indigenous people into thinking this was something good for them and did not give any uh, indication about any uh, environmental uh, issues that could arise from oil development. So now, currently, that verdict temporarily and indefinitely disrupts the contemplated auctioning of over 7 million acres. That's around 12,500 square miles, roughly the size of Maryland. So it is a massive wow. uh, victory for not only the indigenous people in Ecuador, but also for indigenous people around the world who are facing up against governmental and fossil fuel industry interests trying to develop their land, whether it's for oil or for mining. Now, mind you, the government is appealing, and since my article was published, a, a, a date has been set for July 1st. So this is a developing story. So are they appealing to their equivalent of the Supreme Court or their equivalent of a circuit court? I mean, yeah, you know. I guess it's the equivalent of an appeals court uh, in Ecuador, but I, I don't know if they're going to be able to do it because uh, the, the Ecuador, as you may know, uh, made history in 20, in 2008 when they rewrote their constitution granting uh, nature rights. Right. So that hasn't been invoked as far as I know in, the, in, in this case, but it may be invoked later. So they might be facing a constitutional crisis on two fronts. One, that they did not give uh, a free prior and informed consent to those indigenous groups, and two, that they might be uh, running afoul of the rights of nature. Yeah, that's this is this is all absolutely fascinating. Renard is uh, we're talking with Renard Loki, the uh, editor and environmental reporter with Independent Media, uh, about his article published over at Salon.com on indigenous people winning this landmark victory to protect the Amazon from oil drilling. Um, is this the sort of thing? Um, you know, is this? I, I'm sure a lot of our listeners and viewers are like, whoa, that's great information. Is there anything we should be doing or could be doing about this? Or is this just, you know, uh, letting us know the kinds of ways that we can, or at least in Ecuador, that they're pushing back, indigenous people are pushing back against the oil industry? Actually, there is something we can do. The Warani, uh, the Warani group has started a global digital campaign. Uh, mm. basically saying the Warani territory is not for sale. It's garnered currently over 100,000 signatures, um, and in recent days, more than 30,000 people sent emails to the president of Ecuador, Lenin Moreno, basically saying that you can't sell, you can't sell the Warani territory. So it is a global campaign, and if your listeners are interested, they can look, up, look it up on Amazon Frontline. So that's the nonprofit organization based in California that has been working with the Warani on the ground in Ecuador and provided them with a lawyer, uh, Lina Maria Espinoza, who's been working very hard on this case. And one thing that your listeners... And if I, if I could, Bernard, what's their website? Uh, it's Amazon Frontlines. 
dot org. Dot org, yeah. And is it front line or front lines? Uh, it is Amazon front lines, plural, dot org. Okay, so thank there you. There is a global a campaign there. And what your listeners should also know is that the global campaign is probably going to be a little more interesting right now because uh, in March, uh, Lenin Moreno, the president of Ecuador, signed a $4.2 billion loan agreement with the International Monetary Fund, part of which is earmarked for the energy sector. But the IMF managing director and chair, Christine Lagarde, said a key objective of this agreement is protecting, is, quote, protecting the poor and most vulnerable segments in society, unquote. So there is going to be a little bit of international uh, appeal in looking into what they're doing with this money, and is it going to be earmarked for sustainable energy? 